Hey guys, Jason here once again uh, with another Big Box custom theme tutorial. Uh, this is going to be probably the most advanced tutorial that we have done yet. Um, we're going to be looking at data binding and then uh, also adding even some custom platform specific logic into your XAML code. Uh, this is going to be pretty eye opening I would imagine for a lot of people. Um, it was for me when I first figured out how to do this. Because uh, I'm really just learning this stuff with you guys as I go as well. Um, but I am a programmer, so it's, it, it is a little bit easier for me to pick some of this stuff up. Uh, but I think at the end of this tutorial, you'll find that you've got a lot more control um, with your XAML uh, themes. So let's get started. Uh, to start, of course, I'm going to open up my themes folder here inside my Launchbox folder. Uh, and I'm just going to copy the default theme. You'll notice I've got... Uh, Niglurian's clean BG theme here as well, but we're going to start with default for now. We're going to make a copy of it and I'm just going to call it custom like I always do. And then we're going to open up this theme folder and open the actual theme up in Visual Studio. Of course, it's opening on my other monitor, so I'm going to drag it over here after uh, Visual Studio finally finishes loading. There it is. And so, uh, the last tutorial, we obviously looked at the images folder that I just added. So that's uh, something to note. If you haven't watched that tutorial, you should definitely go watch it. Um, I believe it should be up um, immediately before this tutorial goes up. So under views, let's take a look at this guy. This is the platform wheel image details, thumbs, filters view. All right. And we're just going to take a look at some of what this stuff means. Before we change anything, I want to take a look at some of what, what things mean. You'll notice, so let's just take a, take a look at the first line here. We have this transition presenter. Now, transition presenters are what are used for the transitions, the animations that uh, transition between two different things in Big Box. And you'll notice this is, this is what is representing the background uh, right now. So in this particular view, this transition presenter line that I've got my cursor on here is what is showing the background for this particular view. If we take a look at the transition selector property here, you'll notice it has binding background transition selector. Now what this means is this is a data binding that maps up to the background transition selector property in my view model in my code. Now currently you don't have access to that. You will have access to that at some point, but currently that's not something you have access to. But you just need to know that that is coming from from the dynamic code and gives and it's available for you to use anywhere in your XAML. So in other words, the background transition selector is basically hooked up to the setting in Big Box that specifies what transition people want to use for backgrounds. So if you wanted to use that transition elsewhere in a different transition, you could map the transition selector binding background transition selector to a different element, a different transition presenter in your code. Um, so hopefully I haven't lost you guys yet. Also, we have content equals binding background view. So this is, again, it's the same type of syntax. It's the same kind of thing. In my back backend code for Big Box, I uh, have this background view pro property that is automatically uh, available for you to use in the XAML and will automatically change as it should in the XAML as it changes in Big Box. So the content is basically the content that is actually shown in, in the view. Uh, the transition presenters are a little bit more complicated of an example for this, so maybe I should have start with, started with something a little bit simpler. So forgive me for that. Um, but ultimately, I just wanted to show you guys what it what the binding thing is, what it means. Uh, basically, when there's a binding, it means it's mapping to a particular property in the back end big box code that is dynamic and changes. Okay, and also we have more complicated binding things. This binding right here, there's lots of different ways to bind, of course. And this binding right here maps up to the canvas, which is the parent element, maps up to this canvas, and basically is saying, uh, I want the height of this element to be exactly the same as the actual height of the canvas. Um, in other words, fill the control. Same thing with the width. Fill the control. 
Okay, so that's a quick, quick overview on binding. Um, you'll also notice that uh, uh, the grid is using the same width and height stuff. Let's see what else we got in here as far as bindings. Uh, you'll notice I'm using on the flow control, which is the clear logo list here. Um, the flow control is binding the cover factory, which is another thing that will basically provide the right images in the flow control by the code. You have more uh, of the same stuff down here with different transition presenters for the details, for the image, and the top boxes and bottom boxes. It's the same kind of thing. Uh, it uses the view and it uses the transition selector. If we open up something a little bit more simple, we can take a look at the, uh, for example, um, game details view. And in here, this is basically the game details view is what ultimately comes up uh, when you're viewing the text details for a particular game. Uh, and you'll notice in here we have, for example, these, this is a simple example of data binding. We have text blocks, t text block name equals title. And these, these, uh, this is basically the title of the game is what's showing up right here in, in text. Uh, and you'll notice text equals binding path equals title. Okay. And so ultimately what that means is it's pulling the title for the selected game from the back end code and presenting it to you. And again, you can use that title anywhere you want in this view. Uh, you don't have to leave it there. And all you have to do is, is use that binding syntax just like, just like it is right there. You notice we also have binding title visibility, uh, which is hooked up to visibility. And that is used uh, so that in the big box settings, you have the option to hide the title. Uh, and, and that's automatically fed through depending on whether the user has the setting uh, to hide the title or not. So that's what the visibility thing is there. So that is roughly how the bindings work. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys, and this is this gets very, very advanced very quickly, uh, but this is very important. And this will allow you to add custom logic into your XAML as far as what you want images to be, what you want text to be, stuff like that. Uh, the, the, the number of possible uses for this stuff are pretty much unlimited. Um, I'm going to basically use uh, Niglurian's theme as as uh, the demonstration for this stuff because I recently just helped him uh, figure out how to use custom animated GIFs in his theme um, depending on the platform that is selected have a different GIF and so that's what we're going to take a look at using here or to take a look at, it, at doing here to try and demonstrate to you guys what you can do in this uh, for the for this kind of stuff logic wise so I'm going to go back to this platform wheel image whatever it is, filters view. Um, and I have my sample code up here to my left, uh, my cheat code, uh, because this does get a little bit complicated and you are gonna need to uh, take a look at existing code in order to really make this happen easily. But for example, um, if we wanted to, let's say, let's take a look at, instead of using a transition presenter here for the top boxes, uh, we're going to want to put something different there. And let's say we wanted a different image there for every single platform. So our, and actually I'm going to do it down here. This is the top boxes. Um, so our goal that we want to, we want to try and tackle uh, for this, for this demo, for this tutorial is we want to put in a different image that we include with our uh, theme, depending on the, the, the platform that is selected. So that is the goal. So what we're going to do first off, the first thing we need to do in order to allow for the dynamic, um, the dynamic controls is we're going to add a content control. Uh, I'm going to take this out. Oh, we'll take it out in a second after I, after I add this content control. So a content control basically will allow you to put anything inside of it is, is the important thing. You know, notice I'm typing a bunch of stuff and I'll explain it in a second. Content template equals static resource. Um, this is, well, let's call this image template. Okay. So we just added this content control. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to put an up a, few, a couple more properties on this to say grid.row or actually just one more property grid.row equals three. Uh, just 
which tells it that this content control should go in the same spot that this previous one was at. You see this grid row dot grow equals three equals three on the transition presenter. So we're going to delete the transition presenter as we're replacing it with this content control. So the content control basically allows us to add dynamic stuff into the control. Um, this is the shell. Uh, this content equals binding is not important. Just know that you have to have it for this particular implementation. Content template equals static resource image template is important. Um, the image template in particular needs to match up to what we're going to add next. Okay, so that's that is very important. The next thing we're going to need to do is we need to add directly under our user control, which is our parent element here. We're going to add something called user control dot resources, a user control dot resources tag. And inside of this, we put our resources for the object. And most of these views don't have anything like that because they don't need it. So that tag is needed next. And then inside of that, we're going to add a data template. And this data template is what provides all the logic for us as far as how we're going to change the contents of that content control that we added down below. So in this data template, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is say the data type equals x colon type content control. Now the reason why we're doing that is because the data type of our thing that we're binding to down here is a content control. So this needs to map up to this. Okay, and then the other property we need to add directly to the data template is we need to put a key on it. So we're going to say x colon key equals image template. Now you'll notice we used image template down below. So image template right there needs to match up to image template right here. So basically what this is saying is that we're replacing the contents that's in content control with the logic that is in this data template. It's ultimately what we're saying. So again, the image template needs to match up image template, and then the content control type also needs to match up, which is right here. All right, you following, I hope. So the next thing inside the data template, we are going to put the element that is going to be used. Um, so the first thing we do is we, we're just going to put an image in here. Nice and simple. We're just going to put the image tag. Uh, we're also going to put a name on this image tag of, let's say, um, image, uh, template image, whatever. It's kind of confusing that way, but that works. Uh, what is the issue here? In property, oh yeah, it hasn't updated yet. Okay, so we have our image. Um, now, if we set source, source is how we define the path to the image, um, the file path on the disk in order to populate the image and show the right image. If we put source in here like this and we set a static path, um, it would just always display that image. And that's not what we want. We want the source property to be dynamic so that the image that is displayed changes depending on what platform we have selected. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add something called data template dot triggers. Okay. This is where the magic happens, ultimately. Uh, inside of data template dot triggers, you can put something called a data trigger. So let's do that. First off, we're going to put the data trigger tag. Um, and we're going to say binding, there's those bindings again, equals binding path equals platform title. Now, what does this do? This basically says platform title is a property that's available in the back end big box code, okay, that will always give you whatever the platform title that is selected is, and it will automatically update whenever a different platform is selected. So we've added this platform title binding to this. Then what we can do is put a value on it, and we'll put it to Nintendo 64. So ultimately, what this means is that Whenever uh, the platform title is Nintendo 64, you, it will do what, what is ever inside of this tag, ultimately is what this means. 
So what we can do is we can add this setter property to it. So I'm gonna add setter. And inside the setter, we can say target name. And target name is the element name uh, of our image ultimately. So it's gonna be template image, which matches up. You have template image there and you have template image there. The next property we need is uh, property actually, which is the property on the element that we're working with. So we wanna change the source image to, to change the, the, the image of, you know, the, the, uh, the image path that's used in the image. And then finally, um, what else do we need? I think that's it. No, not quite. We have the value, of course. We have to set the value that we're going to set it to. Okay, and the value is going to be the image path of the image that we want. Uh, in a previous tutorial, I believe I showed you how to reference uh, images properly so that they work uh, across all the computers. So I'm just gonna paste this image this image path in here um, and uh, we're gonna change this up. I think my image path is now, uh, yes, yeah, themes custom. So we'll change this and I'm gonna get rid of that and we'll call this just, we'll put the image just directly in our custom theme folder and it'll be called Nintendo 64 dot uh, PNG, something like that. Okay, so now what this means, what we've done here is that down here in our content control, okay, it's gonna go in this grid row equals three and down here in the content control, whenever the platform is Nintendo 64, it's gonna show this Nintendo 64.png image from your theme folder. Now there's power in that, there's all kinds of power in that. Uh, so you can include any any images you want. We also have uh, you know the ability to uh, include custom images and more easily just by throwing them in the folder. But this is going to give you a lot more power. Uh, it really will. We can do more things with text. We can do whatever we want. Really, uh, it's not just images. Um, but we only have one data trigger data trigger in here right now. So let's go ahead and add another one. Let's say another data trigger binding equals binding path equals platform title, again, <clears throat> value equals Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So then for Super Nintendo, I'm actually gonna copy this setter, setter line here. And we'll change this to snes.png, okay? So now what this means is that whenever it, you're on the Super Nintendo platform, it's going to show this SNES image instead of the Nintendo 64 image. Uh, and then if you're on any of the other platforms, it shouldn't show anything. Uh, so that's a big win. Um, we need to get some images in our, in our folder here, and we'll go ahead and test it out and make sure that everything is working as expected. Um, I don't really have images ready for us, so let me go grab some. SNES. PNG. That'll work. Thank you, Wikipedia. And again, I'm going to put this in my Launchbox Themes custom folder right here. We'll call this SNES.png, like we referred to it in the code. And I need one more for Nintendo 64. Nintendo 64 PNG. Uh, something that isn't too huge, view image. And we'll save this one in here as well. I think I called it Nintendo64.png. Save. Oh, there was no space, but I can add a space. All right. Now, this exception up here, this argument exception, dependency property to unset value is not value for the system. Basically, this is saying that a fault value is bogus uh, to be completely honest with you, I haven't figured out why that's coming up. Uh, so bear with me on that. I, I'm sure I'll get that figured out eventually, but I haven't figured out how to fix that in the in the in the editor. 
So and that's one of the reasons why this is an advanced approach. I mean, obviously, when you're adding logic into your WPF XAML, um, there's a, it's, it becomes dynamic and it's pretty involved. But hopefully you guys are following and you're able to do this. So we just added our custom themes, or I mean, our custom images. Uh, and in theory, when we load this up, we should see our, instead of, instead of the top boxes like we usually do for this particular, uh, particular view, which is the platform wheel image details thumbs. That's important that we're, we're on the correct view. We should see this image, those two, one of those two images show up instead of the top boxes. So I'll go ahead and run big box here and hope that we did everything correctly. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to go and make sure my view isn't selected right now. It's on the default view. So we're going to change this to the custom view that I just created. And we'll back up out of here. And then uh, this looks like the correct view already. Let's go down to, there it is. You see the Nintendo 64 image showing up there when we, when we hit up Nintendo 64. Obviously it's ugly. That's mostly just because the image I downloaded was ugly. And then uh, Super Nintendo as well. That one looks a whole lot better, doesn't it? All right, so we just added the ability to add custom logic depending on which platform is selected, ultimately. Um, let's, let's see if we can just do something a little bit different. What if we decided we wanted to add some custom text uh, or something of that nature? Um, we could change this image uh, to a text block. So let's change this to a text block. Let's rename it uh, template text. And then we'll go down to our setters and we'll change these to template text and change the property to text because that is the property on the text block that we're going to want to set. <laughs> okay, and then the value, for example, Nintendo 64 sucks. Uh, Super Nintendo is amazing. All right, see what happens. The other thing is to note that with text blocks, you almost always have to set the foreground color because guess what? Big box is black in the background and so is the text by default. So do that to make sure that you actually see the text that's showing up. Uh, it's gonna be way too small, but that's okay. It doesn't, doesn't really matter for us. Uh, let's go ahead and start up big box. <clears throat> okay, we'll go into, oh, there was Nintendo 64 and you see the little tiny Nintendo 64 sucks showing up there. And then you go down to Super Nintendo and you get Super Nintendo is amazing. So there you go. We have in the simplest way to add some custom logic into your XAML. Uh, hopefully that gets you guys a lot more power uh, for the, the more advanced uh, theme uh, creators and developers out there. Um, there is all kinds of stuff that's possible with this, with this stuff. And uh, to be honest, uh, the, even like the theme creators are kind of amazing me with some of the stuff they're able to do. So let me know if, if you are a theme creator, if you're a theme developer uh, and you're running into a roadblock, please let me know on the forums. Uh, because I want to make this as easy as possible for you guys to build these custom themes because obviously the more custom awesome custom themes we can get for big box and launch box the better it's going to be so uh, really well not for launch box this is big box only at this point but anyways yeah I want everybody to be able to do whatever they're looking to do uh, and fuel their creativity so hit me up on the forums please hit us up on the forums if you're running into a limitation or a problem with your custom theme, uh, I'm sure Nightglurian can speak for the fact that I have I've bent, bent over backwards to help him build the theme perfectly however he wants to build it. Uh, and I want to do that for all the theme creators so that we can really, really get some awesome creativity going in here for these themes. So hit me up. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching these tutorials. I hope you guys can follow this if, if you couldn't. Feel free to ask me some questions in the comments or better yet on the forums and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.